Hello and welcome back to another one of Paul's beer reviews. Hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm a bit late to the to party on this one, but I'm sure most of you have seen videos from all your other favourite beer reviewers that have done this. Um, unless you've been living under a rock, if you're within the, the the beer the beer video viewers you know community, should I say? Um, Guinness released a product, and it went into Tesco a couple of weeks ago, and it's called their Nitro Surge. Um, I've wanted one of these ever since I found out they were doing it. Um, when I went to Guinness last summer, um, there's a video that I did when I was at the Guinness storehouse last summer. I went to try and get one of these. Did you think I could get one? No, they didn't even have them at Guinness. So, um, yeah, never mind. But it's come out now in Tesco. Um, popped up out of nowhere, really. I, don't, I didn't think there was much of a, a release date or any kind of fanfare about it. It just kind of popped up. Um, there's been some really good videos put up on YouTube. Um, Tom. Crummy bread, uh, Chris, Chris beer reviews, a couple of my mates done some really good videos in particular about it. Um, but I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna have a go on it. So I, I invested, it cost me 22 quid for this device. So the idea is it gives a nitro surge to your Guinness and makes it extra creamy, extra smooth and helps you form that beautiful domed head that everyone wants on a perfect pint of Guinness. Um, so 22 quid with the club card. Um, the only thing with it, however, which is a bit of a pain, I think. Um, you have to use these specific Guinness Draft Nitro Surge cans. Um, these were seven pounds for four, and they're just under a pint. So they're 558 mil, was it? Yeah, 558 mil. Um, seven quid for four of these, which isn't the cheapest, but four pints of Guinness, seven quid. In that sense, it's a bargain, right? Um, straight off the bat, I do wonder if Guinness are going to maintain the same price with these or if they're going to come down or what. Because if they don't, I could see this becoming rather obsolete, the word. I could see them disappearing. I don't think it would catch on. I think people might just get a little bit sick of paying seven quid for what is possibly a bit of a gimmicky beer, a gimmicky product. Um, but we're going to give it a go. So the idea is this slot's over the top of the pouring section of the can. You turn it on, and when you turn it on, the harp lights up, which I'll do in a minute. Um, so let's get into it. Let's see what it's all about. So the idea is we want to pour a perfect pint of Guinness at home. So we've got the Guinness glass. Now this isn't quite a pint glass, so I'm gonna to have to be careful when I'm pouring this. Um, some of you might have watched the live stream I did the other night. I managed to go over the top of it, but that was fun. So here we go, so we try again. So you open the can gently, let the initial hiss out. There we go. Open her up. You get your little nitro surge. You line it up so that that can hole shaped hole goes over the top. Push it down. Perfect. And then you turn it on, the little gold power button. And when you turn it on, light should appear around the harp. There we go. Get your glass, turn it right up, and boom. So we're pouring, trying to keep the nozzle off of the glass. I'm aiming to get the Guinness up to the top of the Harp logo initially. I might do it halfway up, seeing as this isn't a pint glass. That might be a better idea. But I'll do that for now. So we'll leave the Guinness there. Watch that develop. I do love watching the Guinness develop. And straight off the bat, that does look already a particularly creamy looking glass of Guinness. I want to call it a pint, but it's not a pint glass. That does look like a particularly creamy looking pint of Guinness. That is developing in the way that you would expect a pint of Guinness to develop in a pub or a bar that looks after their Guinness. That is looking lovely. Nice, slow development. I've got it up to near enough the top of the harp on the other side of the glass there. That is developing beautifully. They do recommend you leave it for 60 seconds. So all I'm going to do is let this develop talk spiel to you guys directly until basically it all goes black and we have a proper a proper good looking glass of the black stuff but i say that is that is developing lovely and that head already looks creamy as anything i feel like you could uh you could dip a strawberry in that that looks lovely but there we go just see the last bit of development on that we must be pushing a minute nearly now just wait for that to completely go jet black Look at that, that does look good, that does look good, doesn't it? 
that does look nice. So that's pretty much developed now. So I'm going to do just top it up. I'm going to go for a nice dome head without pouring it all over the place. So here we go. Don't need to tilt the glass for this bit all the way over. see what we get there we go not quite all of it but yeah that is certainly a domed head on the guinness rest that there i just watch the rest of that develop i can't say that is a sight that does look good like i say i do drink guinness quite regularly normally go for the, the standard the standard draft cans and that is easily the best looking glass of guinness pint of guinness i've ever poured in my house that's for sure um but yeah that's pretty much pretty much developed so there is the guinness there is my dome quite happy with that a little tilt it doesn't even look attached to the beard, does it? It looks completely detached. That looks fantastic. So uh, let's get stuck in, shall we? Slonger. Oh. Oh. That is creamy as hell. I've got a little bit left in there. Top her up. Lovely. Leave that there. But yeah, that is a cracking look again. So look at that. I'll be lacing on the glass. It's creamy as hell. Does it do anything for the flavour? Is it enhancing the flavour? Or the aromas? No, not really. Let's be honest, Guinness isn't exactly the most complex and flavour packed stout you're ever going to drink, but it is still delicious. I've been having this chat recently about Guinness. It's, it's been a hot topic again because of this product. And I, I, I came to the conclusion that when I fancy a stout, I will grab a stout. When I fancy a Guinness, I'll grab a Guinness. And it's just funny that because if I want a stout, I don't, I don't mean Guinness. I don't want to initially grab a Guinness, but I've always fancy a Guinness. It's, it's a specific thing. It's like if you fancy a lager, you grab a lager. If you fancy a stout, you get a stout. If you fancy a good IPA, and you get an IPA. When you fancy a Guinness, you fancy a Guinness. It's almost its own genre of beer. At least, at least for me, it is anyway. I've always got time for a Guinness. That is beautiful. I mean, that is easily the best Guinness I've ever had from the comfort of my own home. Mm. It is silky smooth. There's that lovely touch of sweetness. Very slight hoppy sweetness, such citrusy sweetness that you get. Only subtle. And then there's that gentle roastiness of the roasty malts at the back end. But everything about Guinness in terms of flavour is subtle. But what this Nitro Surge really does is enhance that body. Enhances the body, it makes it creamier, it makes it smoother, easier drinking, maybe, I suppose. It's delicious. It looks the part, it tastes the part. That looks fantastic. That looks fantastic. I, I don't think you're going to get a better looking pint of Guinness at your own home, that's for sure. Mm. Easy drinking. It's lovely. The theatre is perfect. That is the best pint of Guinness you're going to get from home. And it's all thanks to this little doodah. Like I say, I do worry about the pricing of the cans. I think it might put people off, especially the, the situation we're in at the moment, the economic climate we're in. Um, I do think most Guinness drinkers will probably just keep going for the packs of the standard, standard draft. Um, but is it a good product? Yes, I think it is a good product. Um, is it worth the money? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think time will tell on that. I think time will tell on that. I think if Guinness or supermarkets, the contracts that they have drop the price, maybe, 
maybe, when you think you can get four cans of the standard Guinness draft for about 450, five pound. I do think maybe they need to do something similar with this. I don't know. I, I just, I worry that the interest will get lost rather quickly with it. It is a decent product, but it is very much, if you're a Guinness fan or not, I really like the product. I really like the product. From a personal perspective, I think it's great. Um, I'm not going to bother scoring it because it's just not that kind of product, really. But I thought I'd get my review out there. Let you. It's really up to you. You've got to decide what you want to do. If you like a good Guinness from home, I do recommend it. If you're not fussed about Guinness, it's not for you. Simple as that. Um, I hope I've broken this down properly for you. I hope it's all understood. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. I do appreciate it. Until my next one, you take care.